Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is week 44. And this week I want to talk about UPS that's going to partner with Wingcopter to create some cool looking drones. I want to talk about a dodgeball drone. And also I want to talk about some projects that you can do at home with your kids that are drone related. So let's get to it. Before I get started this week with all the news, I know there are some people that are concerned that their certificate, their Part 107 certificate is about to expire and the testing centers are closed and they can't go and uh, renew their certificates. I know the FA is working on the solution, so uh, stay posted as soon as I have more information. I'm hoping next week we'll have some more information, but uh, I know they're working on something to help you guys. If your certificate is about to expire at the end of March, then hopefully we'll have something. Uh, so keep an eye on, on the news and keep an eye on the Facebook page and, and I'll be posting something as soon as I hear more. Let's talk about UPS. UPS is going into a partnership with Wingcopter. And uh, UPS has worked in the past with a company called Matternet to create, to use their drones, use their technology to do some uh, deliveries of medical supplies to different hospitals. Now they're talking with, they're, they're talking about doing a partnership with Wingcopter. And Wingcopter is known for its electronic VTOL. The VTOL is a vertical takeoff and landing a UAS. I mentioned this technology in the past in these videos, but essentially what happens is the UAS can actually take off and just like a helicopter or like a quad copter and then go forward like a fixed wing aircraft, which is really cool. Now, um, Wingcopter has a technology already that they've been using. This thing can have a payload of up to 13 pounds, which is pretty cool. It can actually up go up to 75 miles in distance on one battery, which is quite amazing. And, uh, and then reach speeds of 150 miles per hour. Now I don't think 150 miles per hour is the normal speed. I think it's just, they, they have a speed record actually. And you can see the video playing in the background right now that they have some experience doing this, these types of deliveries in Africa. So, uh, so UPS will be coming up with their next design uh, using Wingcopter drones to do deliveries in the US using their part 135 uh, certificate. The next thing I want to talk about is actually pretty cool technology. This is from the University of Zurich and they are working on the UAS that can actually dodge objects that are thrown at it. Uh, I call it the dodgeball drone. That's not really what they call it, but I thought it was pretty catchy. And this technology is important because it could be something that uh, autonomous aircraft manufacturers would be interested in because uh, autonomous aircraft are going to have to fly in the airspace with manned aircraft and also uh, uh, non-autonomous unmanned aircraft. So you and I that fly our UAS or you and I that fly our airplane in the airplane, we're going to be sharing the airspace with these autonomous drones and having that technology of of figuring out who else is around the uh, around the UAS and trying to dodge them, hence the term dodgeball, right? Uh, is going to be very important. So this technology is pretty cool. Uh, if you read a little bit about the details, which is really interesting to me, I like technology, uh, you can see that they're actually not using a traditional camera. In a traditional camera, you have a bunch of pixels that are all put together. And then there is a software in the background that's going to analyze all these pixels and to detect movement, you have to find when a pixel looked different from the previous image. Uh, if you have too many pixels, then it takes a lot of time to analyze all this data. And by the time you've analyzed the data and you realize that there's an object uh, coming at the UAS, then it, there's not enough time to react. So instead, what they're using is they're, called, they're using what's called an event camera. And that event camera is going to only have pixels that are um, active when there's a change in the image. So if you think about looking at a, a white object, then all the pixels are picking up white. And if there's an object coming through, then, then some of the pixels are going to turn a different color than white. Then in this case, only those pixels that are going to uh, find the image, find the, 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 the colors that are changing, are going to be sending that information back. What this means is that it's a lot quicker to actually analyze the data, which means that when the data is analyzed and there's an object that's detected, then it can send a signal to the propellers to avoid the object in question. You can see the video playing in the background here of these UAS that are uh, dodging object and moving in the opposite direction because they sensed that something was changing in the pixel. So this is really cool technology. I think this is kind of an interesting thing. And, uh, and I think the technology is not only for drones, quite frankly, but for anything autonomous that's going to be out there. It needs to find out what's in the surrounding and then it needs to react. Uh, if you think about your UAS, 
that's uh, the, the Skydio, for example, was a big example of being able to navigate between trees and, and has a, a proximity sensor to figure out the, the surrounding. This would be a cool technology to add to this kind of drone to get even better. The last thing I want to talk about today is uh, a drone project that you can do with your kids. If you have kids at home and they're looking for something to do because they're bored, why not doing some coloring, right? Coloring has actually been proven to be pretty good for uh, helping kind of rest your brain and do something that's uh, kind of easy on, on the brain. So this website called Skybound Rescue has five PDFs that you can download and they're just a very simple design. And then you can color and you can even submit it to them and they have a prize of winning a Lego helicopter or Lego rescue helicopter uh, if you win their contest. And this is, by the way, this is not only something that you can do with your kids. Uh, if you're into Photoshop, you can also do it with Photoshop. As you can see in the background, I had a little bit of fun uh, trying to color these things using Photoshop. So, all right, um, a quick note on Pilot Institute. Uh, we have a promo going on right now for the spring. Uh, we've dropped our prices quite a bit to help people uh, that may be spending a lot of time at home right now and have time to study and learn new skills with their UAS. So our entire collection of uh, courses are available at a discount. Uh, we just passed 12,000 students this week and 18,000 enrollments in our courses. So uh, we have now uh, quite a few people in there, quite enough people to fill a stadium, which is actually pretty cool to think about. Uh, so I've added new questions recently into our part 107. We've got over 300 questions now in the database. And I've also added new videos uh, that's over 13 hours of content in the part 107 course. You will not find another course out there that is as lengthy and as in detail as the course that we have. So this is all I have. Please leave a comment. Please uh, like, follow, do everything that you usually do. And I'm excited. We're almost at 3,000 followers on this pretty new channel. So I'm excited about this. And I always, as I always say this, but I do enjoy the interaction with all of you in the comments every week. So please keep leaving comments. Let me know how you're doing and, and if you're still flying and, and how you're flying and share some of your videos as well uh, if you're out there flying and recording some footage. So this is all I have. Have a great week and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.